Hey, what's up, guys? Today, we're going to talk about one of the most broken characters in Honkai Star Rail, Ting Yoon. Arguably the most broken four star, or at least one of them, Ting Yoon is an amazing harmony support character who can constantly buff your damage and give you energy. And so in today's video, we're going to cover why Ting Yoon is so broken, as well as how to get the most value out of her, covering both how to build her and how to play her. Before we begin, though, I do want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so starting things off, what does Ting Yoon do that's actually so good? Why is she so broken? Well, Ting Yoon, as I mentioned in the intro is a character who will buff your team significantly. This happens in a few different ways, like notably her ultimate, which will not only give you a big amount of damage to a single ally, but will also regenerate 50 energy for them. Now, as you can see, the energy cost of characters burst is not usually that high. It's around 100 to like 130 ish, depending on the character you're using. And so giving 50 energy can sometimes be like half of their energy, right? This is a big amount of energy you're gaining, which means you can use your ultimate more often while also increasing the damage of this ally by a pretty significant amount amount scaling with your talent level. This buff will last for two turns and will obviously buff their ultimate damage, but will also buff just anything else that they're doing for said two turns. Now, if that wasn't enough, on top of her ultimate, she also has other forms of buffs like her skill, which will give a single ally a benediction that will increase their attack scaling up based on your Ting Yoon's current attack. So the higher attack your Ting Yoon has, the more maximum attack this ability can give. And this buff will last for three turns. On top of that, you also get an additional hit one time of lightning damage, which will scale on your allies attack and typically you're going to be buffing a carry your character with the highest attack so it's a nice extra hit of damage with that said though the fact that your ultimate gives you damage for two turns and your skill gives you attack for three turns to your strongest and most valuable carry is absolutely insane this means that you have really good uptime on these buffs and means that you can actually use your basic attack from time to time on your ting yoon in honkai star rail characters that can basic attack are actually more valuable than you might think because this means you can generate skill points and make it to where your team can be more consistent at this skill point generation you can use your skill on your carries that will deal good damage and then always have skill points available to do that as often as possible a lot of the time you may have noticed that your team is really dependent on using their skills a lot of characters want to use them so being able to have someone who is skill point efficient is a really big deal when you pair ting yun being able to basic attack either one to two turns in a row depending on how often you want to use your skill which we'll get into with a healer who will typically be normal attacking until you're low HP and need to use your skill, it can make it to where, as I said, you can use all of your skill points offensively on your carries or offensive supports. Now, what's nice about Ting Yun's normal attacks is not just that the benediction will be active while you're doing it. Like you can start with a benediction and then basic attack for two turns, for example. But also when you do basic attack on her, you actually deal additional damage based on the attack of the ally that you buffed, which again will be your highest attack character. And so because of this additional hit of damage, your basic attacks will actually not be useless. While they obviously aren't as high as a hunt carry for example uh when you pair that with not only good relics and a light cone but also leveling your talents your traces rather which i have been neglecting but when you do level these up and you do unlock these passive ones like increasing your basic attack damage by 40 percent you can actually deal a passive amount of okay damage on top of the main upside of this which is skill point generation passively as your characters are buffed if that wasn't enough there's also a passive talent you can unlock that will give ting yun some speed after using her skill which is quite nice you can move faster with the main main focus of her kit being, as I said, these buffs that are absolutely insane of attack, damage percent, and energy. This energy can be vital to saving you in certain situations. Like, yeah, you typically want to use it on your damage dealer so that the damage bonus isn't wasted, but sometimes you could even use it on your healer if you're about to die and need an emergency heal button to give some energy to your supportive healer. And damage-wise, here's an example clip of my Seelie's ult with and without Ting Yoon's buffs in the exact same scenario. Obviously, this isn't the highest damage possible, but it's just to show the difference between having my buffs and not having them alongside Ting Yoon's other utility that she'll give you. Also, regarding your out of combat technique, this will give you 50 energy instantly. And I wanted to show you that you can't just stack it up and basically just get your ultimate back whenever you have enough technique points to do so. So as you can see, I use it once here. I'll gain 50 energy. It's not quite enough to get my ult back. But if I use it twice, I can now start the combat with my ultimate ready. Uh, despite the fact that in the foreground hall, usually your characters will have like half uh, enough energy for their ult. Here, my Ting Yoon starts with it instantly. I can use it and buff whichever character that I want as soon as the battle starts starts. Lastly, keep in mind that she's also very good at low investment, which is another one of her strengths, as even without the best builds, Ting Yoon can get a lot of value. All right, with all that out of the way, let's now talk about how you actually want to build your Ting Yoon, starting with your best light cones. In this section, we're going to be talking about the best light cones for every type of player, your best free to play options, best four stars overall, and then your best slot, which is a five star. So starting things off, I do want to say that the go to free to 
free-to-play options will either be the Pass and Future or the Chorus. Pass and Future is a weapon that is free-to-play because you can get it from the Forgotten Hall shop as well as from the store on the third planet. What this Lycone does is increase the damage of the next character taking action after you use your skill on your Ting Yun. Because of that, if you are going to use this ability, you want to make sure that the character going next is going to be your main damage dealer or at least one of your damage dealing characters. Because of that, you're going to have to play around this effect, usually by adjusting your speed stat, stacking speed on Ting Yun, making sure you have a bit more than your carry so that you can go first and then buff them after or do whatever works for you. The main thing is that you make sure that this effect actually does work, actually gives damage to a character that will be dealing damage, which makes it a pretty decent free to play option, although there are some better ones which we'll talk about. Before we move on though, I do also want to mention Chorus. If you want to use a three star weapon, I believe this one is very underrated as you can superimpose it relatively easily and then will give all of your allies 12% attack at the start of the battle. Because of that, it's a decent option, but keep in mind that Tiyun is a character who scales heavily on attack, so having high base attack does matter and three star weapons will naturally have less base attack than four star ones. As you can see, 317 here uh, and on past and future, it is 423 at level 80. So definitely a big difference, which is why I personally prefer four star weapons, but Chorus is still underrated and perfectly viable with past and future being a more generalistic free to play option. With that said, there are some better four stars, which we're going to talk about. First of all, if you buy the battle pass, Carve the Moon, Weave the Clouds is pretty insane as you'll basically be passively buffing your team with one of three effects, either giving them attack, crit damage, or energy regen. You're going to have one of these three effects active at all time with them cycling every time your Ting Yun's turn begins. These passive buffs combined with its pretty high base attack for a four star make it a great light cone if you buy the battle pass. But again, I don't think you should feel forced to buy the battle pass because there are other great options like the free to play one is perfectly fine or a better one would be Dance Dance Dance, which is a gotcha four star light cone that has the pretty amazing effect of advancing all of your allies actions forward by 16 to 24 percent depending on how many you have when you use your ultimate on Ting Yun. Because of that, it's just a pretty consistently great option allowing you to get more turns in on all of your characters. Lastly, another option that I wanted to mention is going to be Memories of the Past. I don't really like this weapon too much, but it does give you energy, uh, increases break effect, which isn't the same as break efficiency. It's just a bit more damage, which typically isn't the biggest deal. But the other part of the effect is that it gives you some energy, which can be nice. But typically, if you have an energy regen rope and stuff, you aren't that energy hungry. And the other options I would prefer over it. Lastly, for your best in slot, if you do have But the Battle Isn't Over, the five star light cone, not only will this give you more attack, but it will also give you an insane effect that actually combines some of the other effects that we saw earlier, giving you energy while also regening a skill point when you use an ultimate on a two turn cooldown. If that wasn't enough, you'll also give the next character taking action 30% more damage for one turn after you use your skill. This is insane and similar to the free to play option that we mentioned. And similarly, you're going to have to make sure your turn order lines up. You use your Ting Yun and then your carry goes right after or whoever's dealing the most damage so that this damage buff does not go to waste. Overall, an insane light cone, but it's not one that you need. There are perfectly viable free to play options like past and future, which I personally do like if you can play around it. Chorus being another viable one. And then some other really good four star options like Carve the Moon and Dance Dance Dance. Dance. Moving on for your relics, here I want to be a bit more generalistic because it's still really early game and Ting Yun, as I said, is very easy to build. Even at low investment, she can be great. You just want to make sure you're going for the right main stats and substats on the pieces that you have or are farming for. In fact, the stats and sets you're looking for are the following. First of all, attack percent to increase your buff is always going to be good, with speed also being nice as a substat or on your boots if you want to move faster and get more turns in. And energy recharge or energy regeneration rate can also be nice to passively have as a viable option on your rope so that you can spam your ultimate as often as possible. Now, again, it's still early game, so kind of go with what you have and what you can do. But looking at the sets that we have right now, I really do think that these attack percent, either two piece or four piece sets can be nice. The two piece gives you attack percent and the four piece will give you some speed, which is great, as well as an additional amount of basic attack damage on this musketeer of the wild wheat set. For those reasons, I do believe that it's a great set to invest into for your Ting Yun as the attack and speed are very valuable on her. So the musk of the wild wheat set is the general four piece I would recommend for Ting Yun. With that said, for the other two piece set with regards to your sphere and your rope first things first the stats are going to be your number one priority especially early game you want to make sure you have some energy regeneration if possible and also some attack obviously for the reasons i mentioned earlier more buffs and being able to spam your ultimate with that said there are some really nice two piece sets here that can help you out with the two main sets you could go for being either fleet of the ageless generally the best supportive two piece as it gives all of your allies eight percent attack when you have 120 speed or more as well as giving you 12 percent hp for survivability and since ting yun is someone who you're going to be building speed on, this is something that is very achievable. Also, I think it's worth mentioning the space stealing station if you just want a bit more attack percent on your Ting Yun, 24% total here, which can again be nice for giving your team more attack through your skills effect. But again, Fleet of the Ageless is typically going to be the best here for some passive
passive attack and also survivability, which is nice. With that said, if you're low investment and your team unit is too squishy, you can also go for a survivability two piece just to make yourself a bit tankier if you need it. But obviously, it's not what I recommend, especially when compared to the Fleet of the Ageless, which is typically the best in slot. Next up, before moving on, I did want to mention her Eidolons as being actually surprisingly good. Now, keep in mind, Ting Yun, amazing character without any Eidolons. You don't need these, but if you get them, they can actually make her quite a bit better with her first one giving a speed buff to the ally that has Benediction. So when you use your skill on an ally and then you use your ultimate, that ally will gain a speed buff. Your second one will give this buffed ally energy when they defeat an enemy. Your fourth one will increase the damage multiplier of this Benediction buff. So again, just more damage, which is really, really good on a fourth Eidolon. So this does seem like a pretty strong E4, honestly. And then lastly, your sixth one will give a bit more energy to the ally that you're using your ult on, which in practice can be very useful to help spam your burst. But again, this will depend on your rotation and how much energy said character already has. Keep in mind that your talents three and five just give you talent levels, which can still be pretty nice. Now, lastly, to talk about some teams that you can run Team Union, there's actually a pretty complicated and detailed answer, which is any like genuinely Ting Yun can be played in almost any team as just an insane buffing character. Primarily you want to use her in a team that can utilize the attack and damage buffs you're gaining as well as the energy to spam your alt. In practice this means basically any carry can use her. Hunt carries like Seelee, Yan Cheng, Su Shang, or Dan Hang can all work really well at receiving these buffs and translating it to huge amounts of damage. Dan Hung for example is a character who wants to be buffed to trigger his passive talent that will give him resistance pen when he's targeted by an ally's ability. Because of that Ting Yun is the perfect character and she typically will be for a lot of teams when you want a buffing harmony support. She fills a similar role to Bronya in this sense of buffing a character by a tremendous amount while also being able to whittle down at some shields if they have a lightning weakness. Keep in mind you can do things in team building like stacking two characters that will buff one of your carries and then play sort of hyper carry team alongside a healer and this can work in certain types of content but also a lot of the time you kind of want to run another carry. There's a very flexible slot in your team building process which I might make a team building guide in the future so let me know if you guys want that but typically you're running at least one carry, a healer, and then you can run Ting Yun as a strong buffer, and then your last slot is going to be very flexible based on the content you're doing. You can run another hunt carry for single target, another AoE carry if you want help to clear out mobs and waves of enemies. I personally find it to be very useful. I think having another carry is oftentimes really nice, but you can also run a defensive option, a shielder, or someone who can debuff enemies or break shields very efficiently. There's really so much you can do in the team building process. I feel like Ting Yun can really fit as just a strong buffer in virtually any team as long as you have the slot for it, and as long as you have a character who she can reliably buff and who can use this attack and energy that she's giving you. The only real times you wouldn't want to use Ting Yun is if you're playing a pretty niche team comp, like either trying to stack shields or damage over time or something like that in the simulated universe where you're just trying to survive. In teams like those, yeah, you could go for like a very tanky build. But outside of those exceptions, most standard teams, most general teams where you're running a character that wants to deal damage can really make use of the buffs that your Ting Yun is providing them with, as well as the energy and just overall utility. Because of that, I love Ting Yun. I think she's absolutely broken. Can be used in almost every team, similarly to Bennett and Genshin Impact, where you really want these buffs whenever you can get them. And so that is why I really like her. I hope this guide was helpful. I hope I did a good job at giving you guys all the information you're looking for. If there's anything new you want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.